This is Sadie. She's on Verizon, the network she can count on. And now she has my plan, the game-changing new plan that lets her... <clears throat> Just checking to make sure we're live here. Before actually starting. Alright. Very good. Okay. So welcome back to my second crypto stream. For those who don't know me, I uh, put up an introductory video, video last time and had a market outlook from about two or three weeks ago. Um, interestingly, I'm just going to pick up kind of where we left off about talking about some of the trade plans I was going over, some of the moves that the market was, I was anticipating in the market then. Um, to really dive into it first, I think we need to go over to, sorry, give me one second, go over to total. There we go. Going over to total here. Uh, we drew out these channels last time on stream and talked about the significance of dropping below $1.08 uh, trillion. And that significance played out. <laughs> it really did. So kind of looking back, um, I should have left my doodles. I think we were somewhere around here last time. It must have been Friday, June 3rd. No, we were here. So yeah, 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 I know. Last time I streamed, we were around here. I had said that we were going to probably come down and do something like this and then, you know, drop down. Well, you know, in a perfect world, that's probably what what would have happened. But here in crypto land, we live in a market of manipulation. So this trigger of, of 1.08 was probably the trigger for a lot of shorts, especially on this retest here, that then got squeezed out and it caused a short squeeze. And it kept the money in the market keeping people hopeful while everyone was either unloading their bags and getting out. Then we had the big drop from Binance, right? Which got back, bought back up because we hit the, the previous uh, value area low. And then we basically came right back up to the, the, the previous or the current uh, POC for the month. And <laughs> after that, there was no strength to even reclaim uh the pivot either so we didn't reclaim the poc we came up to this, the uh, orange tn swing box didn't reclaim the pivot fell below 1.08 t again tested it twice over the course of two days right so after that logically in terms of pa what's going to happen next is a sell-off price isn't going up so it's probably going to go down, which means you're going to want to get out of the market, which means you're not the only one thinking that, which means everyone's going to sell. <laughs> That's literally what a sell-off is. Um, then a bunch, of course, you have a bunch of liquidations occurring around this area for tons of different coins. Um, so that's like, this really played out on for total, And I saw this playing out yesterday when we had the big drop come in last night and it went right through the middle of this channel so i did not take a single long position by the way nothing i say is financial advice i'm an extremely novice trader i'm extremely novice at learning uh technical analysis or performing analyses understanding pa uh, my journey began this year so please do not take anything i say as, a, as financial advice i'm not a financial advisor <laughs> this is just my opinion and what I think is going on in the market and what I see based on uh, things I've learned from 
either my own research or other people. Uh, so interestingly, total total overall is just you know going to shit. So there's there's no way that anything is going to go up unless it's like you know USDT versus Bitcoin or you know crypto versus USDT. If there's money coming out of the market, like everything's going to go down. Even the ca market cap of USDT will go down. Um, it's just money leaving the entire market. So you know looking at total two which is everything minus BTC, we hit a very critical point, 500 billion. Same place we were at in March, the March low. But we're not getting above to where we retraced from the lows on those days. It's looking like resistance. And total three looks abysmal. So I wanted to kind of talk about this for a little while. Because what's going on in the United States right now very heavily influences what's going on in total three. Total three is the total market cap of everything in crypto, excluding Bitcoin and ETH. So that's like all every single altcoin, including um, stable coins, I'm pretty sure. So what what does this mean? It means that people are scared that the coin that they've been holding since 2021, 2020, all these cool new toys that came out is now going to be basically banned from trading in the United States, or they're going to have to endure a arduous lawsuit like XRP has, and they'll be dragged through the mud. And no one wants to fucking deal with that. So they're getting out. That's what this is. They're getting out. They're saying... I'm not going to deal with this anymore. This is ridiculous, Gary Gensler. I'm I'm sick of this. You're you're trashing the place. And why should I put my money into crypto when S&P 500 is going up, when Nasdaq is going up? What what am I doing? So that's how many people are thinking right now. That's what led to this. Especially it probably started around here. People were getting wind of you know, the prosecu prosecution coming in. So they started selling off. And you can see more and more. Every time this rallied up, it got completely sold off. Every time. Then you have a big one, two, three here. You know, it, everyone says it's always in the charts, but like, it actually it really is. It really, really is. Um, I don't have any hope for alts right now. As long as these... Uh, conditions are the same. Every alt that um, they're going to gun for that could be considered security, unregistered security, could broaden the term immediately, and then like everything, you know, except for like you know very specific coins, which we'll go into one of the ones I'm very hyped up on later. Um, and it, and it'll just be like you know you can't trade this, you can't do anything, or they have to register, and you know, incur the, you know, the, the trading platforms like Coinbase and, and Binance US woo, uh, are going to incur these really high, like, uh, not, they're, they're, it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard to conduct a business when, when you have that looming over you. Um, I think that very much so, the, 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 the idea is to get flush the crap out right this is the great purge um we'll see probably you know uh there's someone who's very prominent within the the crypto community ben cohen who's been calling for bitcoin dominance to go to like 60 or 70 percent and i think he's, he's he's probably right um we're sitting right at 50 now and if alts continue to bleed against bitcoin which, if Bitcoin goes down, alts absolutely will bleed against Bitcoin. We will see much further capitulation in price on, on alts. Probably new all-time lows for many. Um, or testing, you know, open prices for some of these coins, even. And the reason being is because all that money is going to flow into Bitcoin. Because 
time and time again, Bitcoin's been proven or been been said to be more of a commodity than you know digital gold than uh, a security, and that it's safe from prosecution. It's decentralized. It's also, you know, the most secure of the cryptos. You know, hands down. You, there's no argument about it. Um, that'll be it. I mean, e there, there's probably going to be some sort of USDC FUD where they're going to say USDC is a security and try and sue them there, and everyone's going to flee out of USDC into USDT again. And then there's going to be some USDT FUD, and everyone's going to flow out of USDT into Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's going to go to like $42,000. And nothing else is going to move. Nothing else is going to move. <laughs> What's up, rock and roller? Um, that's my prediction. And the reason why I think that's going to play out is because it's not even based on PA. It's based on the way that, uh, market psychology is going to price in the, the oncoming onslaught of, of what is to come. Because if CBDCs want to be rolled out by a government, then they need to take out the competition, uh, which are decentralized stable coins or centralized stable coins that are not owned by the government. Uh, they got to go. So how do you get them out? Well, you can either ban them straight up or you can, you know, like I said, do something to Circle or, you know, USDC to make it so that it's impossible for them to operate or make their investors scared so that they lose all the money and they can't, they forcibly can't operate anymore. You flush them out and then just take the spot. In the meantime, people are going to go from crypto probably into equities or into bitcoin we'll see so that's kind of like my macro outlook for right now on the situation that's kind of pertaining to total three going into a more like uh price action based analysis here i got a few charts i got a few charts first off looking at the dixie right dollars king We are in a channel. We're channeling sideways. And uh, I saved a lot of my analyses for today. I was going to do them this morning because I haven't uh, really looked at a lot of stuff in a while. I think it's good to take a break sometimes and then come back to the charts with a fresh perspective, fresh look. Sometimes you'll see things you didn't see before. You have a, a new mind set. kind of really helps. I'm trying to find the fucking channels. There we go. I mean, you can just see it fairly plainly. Something just like this. And we're just hanging out here. Up and down, up and down. Uh, the When we break out of this channel, that will be violent. That will be violent. As you can see, yeah, actually, I like that. Because this looks, you know, here's the breakout, forced back in, kept trying to break out. Finally broke out with strength, right? But look at the rejection once it broke back in, all the way back down to the bottom of the channel. I'm actually going to take this out. That was the springboard. I don't know if you, so that's the springboard that sent it. it. Once it reclaimed this level, sent it all the way up from there reclaimed so that's what i've got here a reclaim i want to see if it's springboards but we're currently being limited by the top of the channel so things are kind of getting spicy right because now the dixie is almost in a downtrend crypto is going down and equities are going up so it's not like an algo you know you, you know typically when the dixie goes up Bitcoin goes down and equities go down. And when Dixie goes down, Bitcoin and equities go up. But I think that the algos are just not even trading with Dixie comparison anymore. I think they're just purely moving off of the volatility of the market, probably just in momentum mode. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm seeing with the Dixie right now. If we break out to either side, we could have some pretty interesting results. I think going down to the, you know, breaking to the bottom will hit probably 97. Looks like the next level of support and resistance. 
Where is my price tool? So break down from here would probably end us around there. 97. And then breaking to the top, however, potentially new high. If not, at least, I would say, at least up to uh, 107, testing 107, 108. Maybe even putting in a double top and then coming back down. Um, but that would do a lot of damage to the markets for sure. So here's an idea I've had for the NASDAQ for a while now. It is a bearish heart, uh, shark harmonic that I put up, uh, I think it was late March, that I had noticed this. I was kind of like <laughs> on a harmonic kick around then. And uh, the final target is a second higher top, but like I said, it's bearish. So after we hit this target, we're looking to probably have a downtrend that could even close lower than we are currently. So what does that mean? It means that well, so far we're we're making our way there for sure. Looks like it. Um, we could hit this and just go straight through it. You know, this large uh, time time frames for harmonics, uh, things that are like on the week or daily, monthly, tend to play out with the uh, higher magnitude. But thing is, you don't. I mean. This is just a guess as to where point D is going to be. Point D could be further out. Could also be, um, you know, we could definitely just come down, do something like this, and then get up there, and then come down again. That's totally fine. There's no, you know, rhyme or reason why you have to follow the actual wing a lot of the times actually you'll see harmonics kind of make a, a low and they'll bumble around bumble around and then shoot up so this is something i've been keeping my eye on with the nasdaq i mean it looks like it's grinding up it looks like here's the sell-off right uncertainty buy up sell off again uncertainty uncertainty people are buying this huge level of support from before uh covid or right after covid sorry and we bounced off of it. Now, I don't know if you've read, but a lot, a lot of larger hedge, for, uh, larger hedge funds and uh, what they call smart money is short right now in the market. Well, if you were new money, which I think a lot of there is a lot of new money that could also be potentially smart, and you wanted to take some of the old money out, you thought you were better than them. A lot of you know new hot shots got a lot of hubris. I would squeeze them, send it up. Why not? How much more, you know, at this point when there's a liquidity crunch, it really comes down to who has more ammo, right? Who's got more money? Who's the bigger fish? We'll see. I like this harmonic a lot. It's been playing out. I'm keeping my eye on it. Uh, S&P, still following the channel could absolutely at this point if we so here we are horizontal channel then we got into this ascending channel within the horizontal channel was held we had a ascending triangle which was now broken out of and we're pushing through this large liquidity zone which we've hit the top of and it's forming a rejection candle but i don't think we have one yet and we're still above the poc um potentially what does uh, Tina tell us if we go to previous high here? We're just, we're probably going to deviate the range high. And then if we test range high, like, if, pff, sky is the fucking limit. Do something like this. Whoop! It would be fast. It would be brutal. It would knock all the, sh it would literally be a short squeeze. It would be a short squeeze on the markets. We'd hit equal tops either here or up here because this was distribution, a sell off, you know, buyback, hope, underside test of the distribution, probably a bunch of shorts opened up, down we go. So if there's still short positions here, having it come up with strength probably means that they're going to exit out. It's going to accelerate it. And then once we get here, we could even probably 
say that they'll <laughs> it'll just do this, knock them out, and then go straight back down. If I had the money to to do that, if I had a lot of money, I would knock out a lot of players doing that. Take their position. I mean, it's just PvP game, 100%. So you gotta think, what's the bigger fish gonna want to do? A lot of stuff, you know, in in crypto, it's, or even in in the larger indices, a lot of a lot of trading is not fundamental in my opinion it is pvp who has more money to take the liquidity at either end the bears or the bulls so watching this as well a rejection here and let's actually extend this out so rejection here which could be very possible right we're at, we're, we're at the range highs from the previous high too. So you could even go back and put it at the POC. You know, what if we just start coming down to test this again? Fake out, hit the bottom of this channel as a test, come back up and send. Crypto typically is a barometer for what happens next in the stock markets I found. So if we just crashed on this weekend and next week is the middle of what is the middle of uh freaking June, right? Sell in May and go away. So you've got a lot of people who haven't sold. I mean, it, it's it could be it could definitely happen. I'm just saying there's 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 the potential for a scenario that for the next week or two indices have a huge pullback. A lot of people sell or get short and then the squeeze occurs. But in reality, all we're doing here, we can actually take a look at some gaps here. Because this is why I was saying that. We've got a small gap, very small gap here, tiny, tiny, large gap, close gap. This probably gets filled this week, 100% actually. At some point, this gets filled this week. Does this get filled? I don't know. That's TBD. That's that's my reasoning. That's why I think, boom. Where? So wait. Okay. Okay. Let's let's check. Let's check. What's this? Thirteen ninety two. Three nine eight. Four one. Seven so B three. Oof. What's down here? Three nine eight. Oh, that's that. It's the flat fatty candle. Look at that. Well, I mean, this is a uh, currency.com. It's not the actual indices. It's just a trading platforms, contracts with the indice, I'm pretty sure. But for the actual SPX, yeah, this is this is a fucking magnet. For sure, flat body candle, big gap. But that's pretty far down, actually. So, yeah, right at 4,000. So right at 4,000, that's pretty far into this. It's below, below the range low. That would be more of a pullback than I was anticipating, for sure. So I don't know if we get that now. That that might be a nice little thing to come back to after we go up and then come back down to fill it, right? Because there's gonna be there's gonna be something like that for sure. Or even if we go up and then we come back to fill that, and that's kind of like where we stall out, and then we go back up again, because it would be a deviation of this big range here on the high time frame. So that's something interesting to look forward to as well. So that's kind of like what I'm looking for in traditional markets right now, and what we should be expecting is I think more upside potentially high time frame, and then eventually either putting in a double top um, equally or a higher one for the NASDAQ. We'll see. But then after that, there's, there's going to be a uh, big crash for sure. At some point, this has got to fall down. Everything's going to fall down. There's no money. No one's got fucking money. Okay, Bitcoin. So, put in a couple more channels from last time. And uh, I know we were talking about... I was in a short position here. And it was playing out. Came down 
and then it came back up. I didn't have this green channel at the time. I hadn't actually taken the time to, to figure out that there was there it was there. And I didn't have this bottom channel aligned the way I did now. Uh, I think this is a very good representation of what we're looking for in terms of PA for, for Bitcoin currently. So I got squeezed out, came up to the top. I didn't take a short position, watched it come down, came down, and I patiently watched it come down, right? I called in the Discord. The Discord I'm talking about actually is the green room with Harry at Liquid Markets on Twitter total baller i'll put the link uh for the discord in the video for this on youtube the video description uh but i was watching this like a hawk because we were coming down really fast from the binance news right and i i was watching us blow through the middle of the channel i had this channel set up at that time um blow through the middle of the channel right under here, boom, came down to underside test, boom, came down. And then I saw something interesting. We kind of like stopped right underneath the bottom of the green channel. And I said, okay, that's an interesting reaction. I'll try a long. Uh, I opened a long right at 25.3 and I got closed out probably around, I think it was 25.6 I put the stop. And then I came down lower and I actually reopened again. And I was very happy about this because there was added confluence between the bottom of this channel being front running this liquidity zone and the green Tina box. We dropped from the top side orange through the POC and through the pivot, not only through the bottom orange, but to the green one. That's usually like, if you go straight through one of these zones, the next one is probably going to be your pivot uh, from what I've noticed to go back and at least test the mid range if not the other side again which is exactly what happened uh shorts got squeezed out we went straight the fuck back up now i was foolish i thought that we were actually going to go higher from here um because i was watching this unfold and i thought that it was you know four thanks cz but uh you know during that time something interesting was happening with total What's, what's this? You know, like it put in a lower, a much lower high. And we were struggling to get above this very crucial point. So that's ultimately, I think, what led to the discontinuation of, of Bitcoin's like recovery there is that there just wasn't any money <laughs> to actually pump it up. That was it there's just no demand and unfortunately that's what happens so um i held my long i, I closed out actually a lot of it here uh put it into something else and then kind of held it up here held it down through here um then i closed it out on the, the pivot here so that's the pivot closed it out when we came below the pivot attempted a, a second long in here and then i just said uh screw it and uh, got stopped out basically at the top of this box and let it roll because I had anticipated that we would have a third drop. So here we have a pretty interesting, uh, what's called three drives situation. And I kind of went over this in the in the Discord. So here's your first drive, second drive, come back up. Now we're getting the third drive. Third drive is always the biggest one. And I think that we're going to hit this range low and drive right through the liquidity zone because that's kind of where we're going right. I mean, at, as I speak, we're we're tiptoeing into the green zone, which was very, you know, uh, rejected to the upside last time. It was bought up very quickly. Now we're seeing very weak buying because it's obviously the weekend. No one wants to fuck around with this. Uh, so it's a good time for them to send it down, knock some people out and then pick up the liquidity and probably send it back. I would not be surprised if we just went boom and then just kind of like came back in on no that's too long because i want to see tuesday tuesday will come back in yeah come down basically straight maybe even go back in time monday tuesday or we reject and go down further 
But I think Tuesday is the key. Monday, we're going to open, and there's going to be a gap down, and a lot of shorts are going to close out. There's a lot of shorts that want to close out down here. So it's in the bull's best interest to defend the price from going there, for one. For two, when they close out, it's not like they're immediately going long, right? It just means that they think that that's a good spot to not be short anymore. So why would you open up a short there? Why would you open up a long? Just see, wait for the reaction. See what's going to happen. Look at the order flow. Um, but typically, when you get a three drive situation, that's that's an exhaustion uh, profile. That's usually a sign of, of seller or buyer exhaustion. And then price will tend to reverse. You can uh, actually see it here too. One, two, three, price reverse. Now, does it maintain momentum is the question. Not always, right? We've been in this downward channel. And we've experienced several sell-offs, pumps, sell-offs and pumps the entire way down. But overall, this is what we're doing. Just hyper volatility, chop, get everyone's money out of the market. Because the entire time it's doing this, total is just dropping and dropping and dropping as people are coming out of the market because they don't want to put more money in. They don't have more money. So how can you prop up your coins if there's no money? It's not going to happen. Unfortunate. It's a very bearish outlook, I know. But there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel. If uh, Coinbase is somehow able to fucking kind of like smack around Gary Gensler and, and do some, some good stuff in court at hearings and everything like that, things can go very green very fast. Um, okay, so that's Bitcoin. Kind of what I'm seeing right now. Uh, still going back to the Bitcoin... CME chart, Bitcoin future CME. This gap still looms here. But I was talking about this last night in the Discord as well. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we front run it. A bunch of shorts open up, trap, go up, trap a bunch of longs, and then send it down. Clear out this giant gap. Then we can continue up. Potentially. I mean, there's also scenarios where we, we do not um, do so well. So let me show you. Tina on the yearly is uh, <laughs> really spooky. Give a second here. Come on, Tina, think. Oh, it's not going to like that I'm on the four hour. That's why. Bam. So. Do you feel safe in your longs, Anon? We're below the current POC. Right below it, trending down. Maybe this orange box is our savior. This, I mean, it could be, right? Here we came up. Over the pivot. Hit the red bo orange box. Tested the top of the orange box. Came down, tested the pivot. Went straight through, because we had already tested all this. Came through it. Up top, tested the red. But now, what, what do we talk about earlier? When you come up and go through two, usually you'll come back and test one. So who's to say that we don't come back down here and test this whole area? Tina doesn't like to lie either. She's a very nice woman. I think her insight is uh, pretty keen on the higher time frames, especially. So looking at the six month, it's not as abysmal, I don't think, if I can recall. Yeah. 
in this situation, we're basically breaking out of the previous high. We're still below the current POC, however, but if we hold this, there is definitely potential to moon, right? Because now we've grinded through the, the muck. We're now on the top. And we haven't actually come up to retest this previous uh, Val high of the six month period. Thing is, we're running out of time. One month. We have one month. So that's another scary thing, you know. Just be be open to the idea that it can't be only up. I want it to, and I think that there is potential to, right? We could absolutely just bounce off of 25 and hit and go straight back up. Like 25 on the dot, right? Not a fucking cent lower. That would be prime. Um, let's go to ETH. Talked about this fractal. Talked about this on stream last time. Not really uh, the pattern it decided to take. We went up. If I actually just fucking went like this and extended this down, it probably would have been a little bit more true. But you can see that this fractal actually kind of played out similarly. And it we didn't get as deep of a dive sell-off on this one. I think that gave people hope. But I think that this sell-off will be similar. You know, I think maybe we'll see something maybe more like this. But uh, yeah, like that. Yep, yep, yep. We're going to test this midline again. Uh, ETH is strong, actually. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm i I'm looking forward to, to ETH's strength being shown here versus all other alts. And uh, even Bitcoin, to be quite honest. So, excuse me. 15.30 to 16.10 is probably a good target zone for some, some spot DCA, in my opinion, NFA, right? Non-financial advice. So something like that. Other than that, if we fall below that, we're, we're looking at potentially testing much lower and then falling out of this channel we went we actually went over this channel <clears throat> last stream as well and how it goes all the way back to eth's basically inception it was the highs from eth's first run-up this channel and then it was important in the 2021 run-up and now we're trending within it so breaking to either side of this channel, out of this channel, will be dramatic. Like here, we broke out, got rejected, unfortunate, right? But then what happened is we came all the way to the bottom of the channel. Again, we've broken out on this side. And now we are making our way, hopefully, to the middle and balance. I mean, that's, we'll, we may have more strength than we, you know, did in 2021. We'll have to see if the bulls step in here. That's that's a good opportunity. That's a good opportunity. Uh, if they don't, he's he's getting to be a lot cheaper. Potentially break would potentially break out of this channel. And if we did break out of this channel, we're looking at going down to maybe. <sighs> First stop would probably be around uh, previous lows, right? 870. But from there, you're looking at 760 to 790. Yeah. Potentially 750. Probably like, yeah, 700s. And if the 700s fail, it's looking like 300s. That's crazy. It's actually crazy that ETH was $93 on Wednesday, or sorry, on Saturday 14th, March 20th. 
and then it was fucking four thousand two hundred dollars almost one year later that's it crazy absolutely crazy I mean, don't even get me started on Solana, but still. Actually, you know what? Get me started on Solana because I am hyped on this chart. This We talked about this one last time. Bam. It is coming to fruition. These golden pocket hit. Broke down. So last time we were talking, it was price was breaking down from here. I said it might bump around. I had this probably somewhere like here. I said I was going to do something like that. I noticed we had an ascending triangle that we had a break side, bro broke out to the top side, right? So I moved this over. And <laughs> I'm actually, it was so funny that I'm where I moved it to because it just ended up being right around where it kind of bumbled down. And uh, now we're literally sitting right on the top of the 6.5 Fib level. Interestingly enough, uh, we came down to what seems like no man's land, really. Probably just a crazy spike drive off. Drive off. But where we've stopped on the body of the candle is, is very good. Uh, as you can see, this is the plan. Uh, we I want to see some some strength in here, a little maybe a little accumulation, break back into this channel. Because we've also, another thing to notice is that we've actually not reclaimed the bottom of this descending channel. So that is why I'm not long right now. I want to see price get back into this channel, have a little bit of strength, and then I can I can get in and I can just ride this all the way back up to the top of the channel. If we get back in. If. It's a big if. Because what if not? Well, I've got a chart for that too. What if not? We could hit 12.7, absolutely, bounce back up. But what if this is a much more severe sell-off? So we've got... levels way below that need to be tapped in my opinion and uh i've got this chart here is my big and i'm remiss i did not see that i forgot that we went over this chart last time and i forgot that we had even talked about setting up this short in particular i was too preoccupied with uh watching it bounce and all the other news going on and i you know, you can plan it. It's better, I think, I need an algo to just take the trades that I actually plan for me. Um, because here we are, draw, draw out this level being an extremely important level from the run up previously. There's another one. Uh, in this descending channel, large structure from from the top, right, coming down. We talked about this. I drew this last time I streamed, which was Monday 8th, May. Wow. So I drew this, and I have not touched it since. And it looks like we that's exactly what happened. We we came down and you know deviated this little area. That would be uh, this. Oh, different chart. This part here, where the ascending triangle played in. So there's the ascending triangle, break out to the top. Here's the attempt to break out of this structure, this huge downtrend, right? Failed. Failed. Broke back in. Big sell-off. Attempted to break back out, rejected twice. Big sell-off. Broke under here. That should have been my trigger to get to get short. <laughs> I don't. I can't even help myself. Apparently, you know, I I can plan it. I can I can spend all the time, and then when push comes to shove, I don't even enter my own freaking trades. Anyways, um, this would have been a fake out though for sure. But even setting the looks like I would have been safe at least twenty two seven four twenty two forty five would have been safe. Um, coming down. So it looks like we've actually got plenty of room to the downside. So that's why I say I'm not I'm not long yet. Cause this can get much uglier. We went from thirty-six dollars to eight dollars. Why can't we go from eighteen to six? Or four? All the way down here. This is what I want to see. 
I want to see like a long term. So this is <laughs> this goes back to what I was saying about the SEC lawsuits, right? No one wants to deal with them. Oh, they're going to be long and arduous. Soul might be a freaking security. I don't want to deal with it. And then they're getting drawn through the mud because there's regulation. Oh, maybe they have a good ruling today. No, just sell the news. Okay. Oh, wait, actually, they're going to pull it off. Boom. You know, I want there to be a long, drawn out battle where they win. Uh, I think that's potentially what could happen. Um, or we could just hit these bottom levels and, and shoot back up if there's no lawsuits or things get thrown out quickly. But I want to see a long period of really, really, really cheap Solana trading in these efficiencies. Coming down maybe in, you know, maybe even touching these. But these these look pretty resolved, right? This looks like it was pretty heavily traded. This is obviously where it was just manipulated up. So it needs to trade these areas. We're going to see it in here. I usually don't believe many things until you show me, and then I am forced to believe them because the math is correct. Rock and roll, and sometimes it's discouraging. Stop discouraging my bags. <laughs> no, but I am looking for this. So this this is another uh, chart I had for Soul. I can you tell that I like Soul? I'm gonna take that out here. Should have taken profit. Yeah, I should have taken profit back there. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so this was a nice little channel I had drawn. Very simple, right? Takes two seconds to draw a channel. That makes sense. But here again, what's this line? This line is the same line here. Same price. I think, was that 19.6? 19.2? Yeah, 19.6, 19.2. Well, different, like I said, I mean, it's close enough. Different exchanges, different prices, but you can see that this is, that's that same uh, line of resistance and support. Broke out of a, of, of, of a horizontal channel. I mean that. So uh, in the Discord, we have a education uh, channel. And in that education channel, there was a uh, economist who did a study basically talking about um, the magnitude and the likability of a breakout from a specific pattern. And the most likely uh, pattern to have a breakout with large magnitude is a horizontal uh, accumulation channel, something literally like this. If we had broken up to the top side, these candles would be whoop, up to 35, maybe 36, and then coming back down. But no, break down to the bottom, and it's violent. There's a huge sell-off. I mean, even here, it was a huge sell-off. We went from 19 to $16. That was a nice channel. Um, so what, say we do bounce from here, All right? Let's, let's do some what-ifs. Let's do some, some, some live planning. Let's say that's the end of the impulse. So we're going to go from here to here. Let's see if it makes sense. Let's see if I can make sense of this. Where would be our next interactions? Like that? Or would it be like that? So what I'm looking for right now, just to go through the patterns of how I kind of determine angling and sizing of an actual channel. I want to go from the bottom of the impulse to the top of the impulse, which doesn't necessarily always mean the top of the channel because what's next is uh, what's what's important next is to find where the midpoint is. So this looks like a midpoint test. So if I maybe put it up here a little bit, could look a little better. I like I like that because that looks like it's trying to break through. This is the pinnacle, top top of the channel. Rejection comes down. 
we have it trying to break above the midpoint, holding the midpoint. Movement above the midpoint, breaking below, tests the bottom, comes down to the bottom. So let's say that this is this is real. How do we work with it? What does it mean? Um, something I like to to think about is anytime you see like you know, someone say, oh, it's a bear flag. Oh, it's an ascending triangle. Oh, it's, uh, you know, whatever. Descending wedge. It's usually the interaction of two different channels intersecting. So here we have an ascending wedge now. What if we just bump around in here for a little while? Deviate out, oh, come out maybe, no, deviate, and then just come back into this channel and full send. That could happen. If we, I'll keep this up and we'll keep people updated. We'll see if we get a breakdown from this, uh, from this channel. It will definitely probably be this, this scenario rather than this one. So that's my outlook on Sol. Um, something I want to talk about next is STX. We've had I've been talking about these levels for a long time, long, long time. Um, very interestingly, <laughs> freaking the uh, seven eight six was like kissed perfectly. Forty four cents. I've been calling forty four cents for a very long time on STX. Um, again. Would have loved to have a algo um, take my trades for me because, gosh, that would have been beautiful. You know, going from 44 to uh, 52 in one candle. Um, that's This is a pretty uh, nice little candle here. However, it doesn't really mean anything because we're still below. We're basically underside testing. So this would have been nice to get in and get out and then maybe see what comes next um, just because of macro factors. But this does look like we're coming into this. Uh, this actually does look like a downwards uh, descending ch channel here. Everything's a channel. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, let's take a quick look. Ooh, I actually like that. That looks pretty good. So I had originally planned for STX that we would hit the, the golden pocket and we would get some nice bullish movement um, momentum to get through it. Uh, we did not really. I mean, there was some, it got sold off immediately when we got over the golden pocket. And you just saw me, I just put this downwards uh, channel in so maybe we get a bounce to underside test uh five nine and then we go down further and retest 44 cents or potentially come down and test 38 but i don't think we're going to go much further down than that because you can see here uh someone has a position <laughs> at those levels and maybe they did offload at the top, but my guess is that they're, and they even started DCAing up here. I, my guess is that they're probably pretty interested in, in starting the roller coaster again. So they'll probably start bidding around those levels, uh, defending price to go back higher. We'll see. Uh, but for now, STX is in a very precarious place, probably going to go lower. If not, um, after a bounce to, to five nine or under six, just to probably retest the underside of the POC from where it fell and touch the top of the channel before going lower again. But I would be interested in seeing another reaction at 44 cents. Um, okay, Rose, this is a good one. So I was super hyped about this, actually. I was like, oh, check it out. Nice little head and shoulders forming. Okay, but we actually 
rejected hard. Um, but here's the thing. This could be some pretty gnarly manipulation. Um, it does look like a, a nice little three drives here. And if you do take a look on an even higher scale, we have one, two, three. I want to see Rose reclaim. I, the second it reclaims this level with a little bit of bullishness, dude, I'm in. I am in. I think it got lumped in with uh, some of the SEC news. But I'm not too concerned about it, TBH. Um, the only other thing that could be an issue is if we make a, a uh, if we make a similar low I may get long then if we make like a, another bottom and it becomes like a, a a zigzag bottom I'm just gonna make that up I'm not actually sure that's even a term it would be a double bottom essentially that would be potentially huge uh, rose is a good one to keep an eye on um, something else I was really interested in that I was shouting and screaming about in the Discord last night is Mask. If I can find it on my list. It's not organized at all. Please don't judge me. Um, let's see. Okay, not in as good a place as I thought it was going to be. So this is not good, actually. But could be good for a short scenario. Um, underside retest of this large channel structure could lead to a pretty large sell-off but definitely want to catch wherever it, it bounces from um probably gonna have to rely on tina for that at some of these key levels let's take a look at some of the higher time frames um on a three month swing here yeah we bounced off of the orange but what if we come down here you know i don't think that's out of the question but, yeah, i mean it's pretty far down actually two dollars I mean, it could happen. Either way, um, watch for a reclaim on this. Because if we get pushed back up into the channel and reclaim, what is this? Uh, $3.50, like $3.50? Yeah, that's my trigger. That's my trigger. Boop. Wow. Something like that. Um, and that's the exact sound effects that the exchange makes when I make my positions. So I'm just trying to be real. <laughs> uh, I'd be looking for that, if not just to underside test the current PS the uh, PSC again and potentially drive up to this liquidity zone and then over a larger time frame, get up to $14. That's my ultimate target. That was the highs previously. Break that. We could even hit it up to 35 So mask, mask is what I'm keeping an eye on as well. Uh, Link, we were talking about this earlier today in the Discord, how Link has made a new low, a much lower low. Now here's the interesting thing. Uh, Flame in the Discord and I were talking about this potential move back. I drew this in March, March 13th. Uh, this is the large channel from when we uh so again here horizontal channel accumulation distribution accumulation distribution breakout run it's a huge run every a lot of the times these breakouts from horizontal channels are very large so <laughs> i i ask you for something that's been in a channel for uh almost a year over a year, um, now breaking out of it. This situation scenario is pro probably likely. Uh, we probably may bounce in here and come back up to six, potentially to underside test it, but uh, I do see us coming down and, and testing some of this. And I think this will come to fruition. And I do thank Flame because initially I was saying that the bottom was in for Link and I thought this was the accumulation zone. And he said, no, he said, it's going lower. He said, look, at lower, look at the, the zones down there, draw out a channel, and tell me what you think. And I sent this, and he said, yep, so this is the plan. 
And as I talk, it's putting in lower lows. Oh my goodness. Uh, Link is actually a, a very valuable crypto. Um, it actually serves a fucking purpose. So that's rare in the crypto world, and it shouldn't be overlooked. Everything needs an oracle. Uh, and you want your oracles to actually work and be dependable. Uh, and a decentralized one is even better. So ideally, you know, you want that to succeed. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, we talked about AVAX last time. Woof! Brutal. Remember how I was ranting and raving about this horizontal channel and how important it was? Oh, look at all these interactions, and this is the breakup, and we went up there, and then we came down, and we were there, and then what happened? What happened next? What happened next? We did not reverse. We, re we actually, if we expanded this out, right, to the levels at which I was saying that those would break out to. Here we go. It's all just a bigger channel, right? And what happened? We broke out. We were all played. I was so bullish here on, on AVEX. I really was. Um, and you can even see the you know, secondary structures. We're playing out. And then boom. That was it. Man. Yeah, it's not looking good for Avex to put in a lower low than uh, the, the January open. Kind of spooky. Did that on Bybit, did not do it on Coinbase, which means it could go lower. I mean, it stopped at the previous val, which is interesting. Good job, Tina. Good Tina. Um, but it could go lower. Absolutely could go lower. Okay, going on. Matic. Matic, breaking out of an ascending structure. that I had mapped out for basically its entirety. So what if we see something, <clears throat> basically the inverse of this on this side, we see a, a massive drop down, but then break back in and it goes back up. Um, Matic on Binance. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, just from a textbook perspective, which I never read a finance textbook, so don't think that I know what I'm talking about. But that looks like a double top, and it looks like this is thin air. So who wants Matic at, at 40 to 28 cents? Sounds good to me. Here, <laughs> here you know what? This is what I reckon. This is where Maddox going to trade for its base for the next run. In between 29 and 32 cents. <laughs> that this whole gap right here that's why I love log charts, is, uh, oh, sorry, between two, two, holy shit, two. I was actually misreading that. I'm so sorry. Between two and 32 cents. Okay, I was going to say that there's no way it can be that big. Anyways, two to 32 cents. We could absolutely spend a long time in there. Actually, I don't know. looking at this on a closer scale, that's too much grinding for a break-in. Kind of like this a little bit better, actually. That fits much better. Yeah, I like that. 
yeah, that's a much better interaction. Break in, shoot up to the middle. Interaction, get to the top, hold. And now, so, okay, we basically have our line in the sand, and Tina has also shown it to us too. Here it is. Let me move that over, because apparently I can't draw. So here it is, right? 28, so I was right. It's, it's 28 to like 36 cents. Hold that, and there's a fucking hope. If not, if we're going down potentially to four cents. Crazy. That's a big drop. <sighs> I hate bringing this one up. It's so depressing. Near. My, my heart is broken. You were supposed to be the chosen one. Also putting in a lower <laughs> low for this year. Very sad. Um, it just goes to show that you really can't trust any coin that I like. And you can see here's, here's the long I planned. And boy, did that not work out. But also, keep in mind, this is why we keep stops where they are. My stop got back tested. You know that's a good stop when your stop gets back tested right <laughs> so that worked out as it should right the trade wasn't a bad trade i got stopped out sure but it wasn't in theory a bad trade there were potentially one two three times i could have entered this trade and taken profit on it instead i was greedy and wanted it to go higher and didn't really uh utilize my tools as well as i should have um but getting stopped out before the real drop that's key. That's key. So let me let me take this opportunity to talk about position sizing and and risk management because uh, this is a good example. <laughs> I know my I was saying my heart is broken. Um, rock and roll, yeah. Uh, so say you have a hundred dollars, right? And you want to take a position. You want to take a long position on near. And this is this is the trade. So first, before you even think about how much money you're going to put in the trade, set up the trade with no money in mind. So now you have your entry, your stop, your TP. So you have your ideal TP. Um, you have $100. So from, let's check this real quick. How much money do you put down so that if you get stopped out, you only lose one to two dollars, right? Because there's no way you can tell where the market's going to go, right? I thought it was going to go up, but it didn't. But if I only lost one or two dollars and I have a hundred dollars in my portfolio, I live to fight another day. And say, say this did happen. Say I entered here, it went up. And I came down, and I didn't take any profits. I did nothing. I lose $2. It comes back up. I enter. Comes up. I take profit. Maybe I get $1.50. Comes back down. Do the same thing. I take $1.50, you know? Potentially, there's, there's a scenario where each time that the trade kind of interacts with your entry point, you could, in theory, take the trade again. Because who's to say that this couldn't have been a double bottom when we shot back up? The trade is sound as long as it exists, and you shouldn't base entering or exiting or you know the trade that you're going to take on a previous trade's outcome or a previous trade in general. Uh, trades are not mutually exclusive. They're individualistic, 100%. So get stopped out, lose $2. You've got $98 left. So you've got... Potentially, if you risk 2% of your portfolio every time on trades, you have 50 attempts, right? Essentially, if you lost every single time, you'd have to lose 50 times in a row without winning once to lose your entire portfolio, which in a game where you have like a 33% chance of winning, I say 33%, you know, it's not just long or short because you can also be in no position. So there's three options you have, right? We went over this last time. It can be long, short, or no position. So if you decide to be long and the market goes up, then you win. If you decide to be short and the market goes down, you win. Obviously, sharp. if you're short and the market goes up, you lose. 
Um, and I like to say when the market goes sideways or you, you, you're in no position, that's, that's the house winning because <laughs> everyone else is losing. Um, but I mean, that's, that's essentially it. So you, in theory, have a higher likelihood of just guessing than losing all of your money if that's the case. If you're only risking 1% to 2%. If you risk 1%, you have 100 attempts. So if you have a system that works 30% uh, of the time, and that system usually gives you 3R, if you know what that means, that means basically that if I put down uh, one, $1 and the system will provide me with a risk reward and at the end of this trade hitting successfully where I want it to, I will now have three dollars um, or four technically if I put down one and it's going to multiply it by three I'll have profit of 300 percent be three dollars so four dollars or so I take that into account now if we we basically every win is making up for for three losses. That's why risking little, gaining little is better than, you know, seeing something and going all in because it gives you the opportunity to continue to, to, to do what you're doing. And the money doesn't matter. The, the actual value of how many zeros you're putting into the account doesn't matter because if you have, so let me tell you, if uh, you have a successful system and you put $1 in. And this system over time generates, you know, through a 40% win rate, um, you know, 10% a month. Well, it doesn't matter how much money you put in. You're going to generate 10% compounding every month. That's the power of a system. It doesn't. And then eventually, if your system is tried and true and you trust your system, you can do algorithmic trading or you can you know, utilize it yourself and just start increasing the amount of money that you're using. Because at that point, it's not, like I said, it's not about the money. It's about using the system. The system's proven itself. The system knows what it's doing. Will you lose? Absolutely. Losing needs to be part of your system. It has to be. There's no way you're going to have a 100% win rate. It's impo I think it's impossible. Um, unless you are literally like, god tier market maker um that literally decides you know where the market goes and i don't think any you know unless you're like elon or jeff bezos like holding hands together deciding where to go to with the markets it's not happening um especially with leverage so that being said that's how you would kind of position yourself you so you would say how much money am i going to put down how much from if I enter here and get stopped out here, how much can I buy so that I only will lose one to two dollars? That should be the question in your mind when you're deciding how much you're going to put down. Not how much I'm going to make, how much I'm going to risk. Because making money is just an outcome of winning, and you should be more concerned with winning. And if you don't have money, you can't take tries at winning. Does that make sense? It's like going, it's literally going to the arcade, right? You can't play the games to win the tokens or the tickets if you don't have tokens. So the idea is to preserve your capital. All right. So I'm tired of looking at near. I'm, I mean, it's probably going to put in a much lower low. I have no idea where this is going to stop, quite quite frankly. Tina says it might stop here at 71 cents. I wouldn't doubt that. I mean, what if we just did this, like, horrible bleed down to 4 cents, right? Because if we break below this, this bottom of 51 cents, this is just like, uh, what's it called? Price discovery for new low which is very depressing. Um, we'll see what happens. Honestly, it's I'm not too keen on uh, getting into a near position quite yet anymore. Um, I just wanted to go over that because I wanted to talk about 
how that was a good one for, for risk management and kind of go over what I feel like is good risk, risk management. Um, LTC and Aptos, and then I think that's it. So LTC is one I'm keeping my eye on. This chart looks bullish as fuck on high time frames. Even with this sell-off, we're still arcing up. Um, we'd have to drop like below, yeah, we'd have to drop below Tina's levels currently to really kind of break that in my opinion, which it very well may. This is becoming pretty brutal, but it can be bought up very quickly. The halving is coming up. Um, actually, you know what? What if we put in a, bottle, a double bottom, a bubble bottom? That would be fucking amazing. That would be an excellent opportunity to probably like accumulate very hard, accumulate some good LTC before it full sends for the uh, it's having. And when I say full sends, it could just go up to like 140. But even that, so even if it comes back down into the in 50s and whatever, going to 140 is almost a 3x on spot. Imagine on derivatives, right? So with leverage. So you're you're talking about huge moves, um, and we've been to these levels many times. Oh my gosh, I'm. It's always a channel. Here, do it live. We'll do it live. It's always a channel. So. Which way will we break out? We're right in the middle now. What if tomorrow we wake up and we start seeing this? What then? I mean, we, we could also see obviously the opposite, but get this? I'm, I'm gonna start looking at longs. So what if we just get to continuation and we break out to the top? And again, with this channel, so the reason I kind of was able to put that together is the PA on this is actually pretty pretty beautiful. You have the grind up entry, you have the underside test, upper side tests with breakout, trying to stay back out, top, bottom, middle, breakdown, reclaim, test, top. Breakout underside, you know, it's, you, that's what you're looking for. You're really looking for the price action around key levels at the middle and the bottom. So we'll have to see. Uh, I'm definitely interested and definitely horny on Litecoin, though. That's that's one that we want to keep an eye on because um, if we hit these range lows again and and hold them, we're, we go up. That just seems to be the law, right? That's the law. You come down and you touch this line and uh, you reclaim it with any sort of bullishness or you bounce off of it, the law is that you have to go up at least a, a little bit. <laughs> so we'll we'll see. It can get worse. Uh, I, I'm sure it can get much worse, right? Let's Let's look at this, right? That's pretty bad. That's Coinbase. Let's see, Binance. Do I have Litecoin on Binance? I don't... Gosh, I'm such a noob. Uh, there you are. All right. No way. It was listed on Coinbase before Binance? That can't be right. I guess it's right. Holy shit. Okay. Okay, so looking at Coinbase. That's uh, kind of depressing, actually. Because that means that if we break below... That's pretty low, actually. $22. That we're looking at, like... Way low. But I don't, I don't know if we actually go there. I think that we may bottom out around where these other other areas have bottomed. There's a lot of bullishness for, for, for Litecoin right now. And it looks like we actually have an ascending channel structure. 
or at least a trend line. I'll throw in a line. Something like that. See, it's, it's fighting. It's fighting at this midline here. Tina's doing her job. So, we'll see. Another one I'm keeping my eye on. So, everything we covered today, I'm definitely keeping my eye on. Uh, render, I think that this is this is toast, quite honestly. I think it's coming down much further. Uh, Aptos, very depressed. I don't look at this because I missed my own call again. Sadly, I cut this short and then I went long and I did not take profit where I took. Actually, no, I did take profit. I'm sorry. I took profit um, too early and then I was expecting it to go higher before the drop. I did not pay attention, literally did exactly what I thought it was going to do, came up and then it went down. Not as high, obviously, but came down to right around this level. Um, this is, again, an area I'm looking to short. Uh, even as Flame put in his uh, post today, and then looking to uh, see some reaction here and then go lower, put in a lower low. I want to see a lower low for Aptos before even considering longing it. Um, the only reason that this shot up as much as it did was a, a short squeeze, 100%. And ever since then, everyone has been horny for it. And the three people who actually use Aptos, I think, have just been trying to, you know, figure out <laughs> what even is the reason Aptos exists. So I think a lower low is possible. Um, but yeah, other than that, two more. Actually, two more. Two more. This one's exciting because this one's funny. Turbo, right? Okay. I love this one. On its way down to hell. I don't think there's any stopping it, right? This is the this is the gate IO chart. Let me show you the the Weath chart. We have so much room to go. <laughs> like so much room. It can get so much worse. I didn't realize how how bad it was for Turbo. Uh that thing is hit hard. Um Now the last one I wanted to talk about actually yeah last two I want to talk about, DXN and Zen. So this is like probably the conclusion of the stream. Uh, the reason that I'm so excited about Zen and DXN is because uh, they are revolutionary coins, in my opinion, that are based on fair crypto principles. And they utilize a uh, philosophy that I think Bitcoin has. Um, but this, you know, of course, everyone's trying to say, oh, it's a better version, of, better version of Bitcoin. It's not really a better version of Bitcoin, but the tokenomics are very similar to it. Um, in a sense. In, 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 the way, in the way that distribution will occur over time. That's the way I wanted to say it. Because uh, the tokenomics are not actually very similar. But I strongly encourage anyone to do research on Zen Crypto. Uh, read the Zen Light paper. Um, it speaks for itself. Absolutely. And then the thing, the main thing I want you to ask yourself after reading it is, can it be considered a security? Because that's the hot question these days. Can it be considered a security? Um... Something I'm not keen on is this horizontal channel I've got. We're dangling off the side. Um, breaking out to the bottom probably means a lower low. Holding and going back up could definitely retest some highs, the, the 0.5s. Getting above here and going up again would be astronomical. But the way I see it, because I'm an optimist, and I want to think optimistically about my bags, of course, but obvi obviously it could go... I'm going to give two, two perspectives here. We broke into the channel, right? No retest. We just full sent uh, to the very wake out of the channel, deviated it, 
came back in. So what we're seeing now is obviously just the sell-off and the retest of this breakout. Um, so far, we've created a, a double bottoming structure with a lower, uh, a higher high. Um, unfortunately, we are dangling on the bottom side of this channel, not breaking in. Tina's top of the box is the only thing that's saving us. Bottom of the box, probably nothing there. Maybe, you know, there's a little bit of support here from before because this was the very, very bottom so far. Um, something else that's kind of a little concerning is is that there's a very small candle here uh candle wick i don't think it's a big magnet to be quite honest um but it, it could be and then if we i think if we just get down here anyways we're putting it in a lower low but i'm hoping to see this break back in um dxn is a token that's in the zen ecosystem you can also read about it in its white paper it's a very interesting concept and I think it has a future. Uh, its PA is interesting as well. I noticed that this was a thing for a long time now, and I didn't think that it was important because I thought it was just you know day one and day two, and this is technically the open price. But these these candles obviously having no wick on the bottom is important. But I didn't think that this was actually a gap. Lo and behold, we go up right, hit the top of this uh, descending channel middle break up to the top and this is this upper channel is basically the high range and that's why it says previous high right this is the high range so we broke back down hit the middle touch the top it's actually in my opinion been obeying this channel very nicely i kind of came down and you can see a lot of people buying in here um a lot of people defending their long positions probably uh right around here is where a lot of people exited out and then liquidity starts drying up here. So that was the key thing. A lot of people in the pool probably provided liquidity around these areas, and then no one provided it down here, and that's why there's this gap, right? If there's no liquidity, then it just goes right through it. So you had two flat body candles and a freaking gap. That's a huge magnet. What happened? Whoop. See you later. Deviated it, closed the gap, closed everything. Someone made a fuck ton of money in one night playing this they had to have right but i think this was a dollar 50 and it went back up to like ten dollars or uh went up to eight or nine yeah to eight or nine nine or dollars very quickly uh again three days in a row we tried to sell out from this channel three days in a row held it came up tested the range low rejected came down tested the poc accepted tested again rejected the poc but accepted the channel so far we're still in this channel so if i invert this i like to sometimes look at the inverted charts what does that look like looks like a good short almost maybe maybe we come back out here and then come back down but that's a rejection candle I've ever seen one and uh, I wouldn't be surprised you know here's the here's the retest just like this broke down touch retest what happened other side of the channel you know broke in retest other side of the channel wouldn't be surprised if we came back up and tested the previous high or even this pivot which is like 40 I think that's about forty dollars or 20 20 40 dollars maybe I think maybe it's hard to tell on the the wheat chart, um, but either way, optimistic. I'm optimistic. Um, all right, boys. So I've been rambling for hour and a half now. I think that's uh pretty good. That's kind of encompasses the what I'm seeing right now. Definitely keep your eye on total. Does not look good. Money not coming into the market means nothing goes up. Don't take longs if money's not coming into the market. It's not going to happen. Um, the only reason you should, if anything, is if there's like some sort of narrative, right, that has to drive the money from other things into your asset, which would be basically either Bitcoin or Ethereum. Because right now, everything else is cancer, right? It's like, don't touch 
anything that's an altcoin. Don't touch anything the SEC could say is is a is a security. So Bitcoin and Ethereum are your safe ones. You know, your safe ones are the ones that are going to be probably where the money goes into, but they're not going to go up. They're just going to go down slower than the other stuff. Nice. Nice. I saw this with Soul. Nice little reaction here. Reclaiming the the lows of this channel. Very cool. Let's see. This is probably a gnarly four-hour candle. Oh, and it's getting limited by the upper side of the green of the of the golden pocket. Maybe. Maybe. Yep. Yep. Oof. Let's go. Let's go down to the. Yep. Someone wanted their shorts filled. That sucks for uh, soul fanboys like me. Haha. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty good. That means that it's it might kind of bounce around here, and we might get another attempt at getting a, a lower entry at the seven eight six. Yeah, it's manipulated as fuck. Here's the price jump up, the sell off, open the short. I'll push it back down. If not, if not, at most we're going back up to sixteen forty eight. That's where this fell. This is that's where this drop came from. Underside retest it, squeeze out some shorts, cap these. Yep. If, because if not, then that's it. And then you'll go back down. We'll hit here, probably. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Oh, go Zen, go! Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate you. Uh, you can find me in the green room. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care.